Hello, Auntie Debbie here, you children, or you could call me Nanny Debbie. And today I'm going to read you the story of Palm Sunday from a very, very old book. Look, can you see how it's just about falling to bits? It's been around for a very long time. And the story of Palm Sunday, and this is a picture that goes with it. Jesus had been travelling around the countryside and was now returning to Jerusalem in time for one of the great Jewish feasts which was due to take place very shortly. From village to village he had travelled and wherever there were people and children he stopped to talk to them, to give them his blessings and to heal them of their sicknesses. Many, many miracles he had performed. Hundreds of people he left behind him who had suddenly learned happiness because of what he had said and done. Some of those people had even left their homes and joined Jesus. And his disciples, eager to know more about this man who healed the sick at a touch, and who told them that even they, the poor people, could one day reach heaven if they listened to his words and followed his teachings. So by the time they reached Bethany, which was a short distance outside Jerusalem, it was quite a throng, and it seemed to the disciples, who were always anxiously watching their beloved master and trying to look after his comfort, that Jesus was tired. Also, as Jesus was king of the Jews, it did not seem right to them that he should enter Jerusalem on foot, dusty and tired. They knew, of course, that Jesus saw nothing at all of worldly possessions because that was one of the things he was always preaching. But they did feel that a little pomp should be displayed when a king entered his capital. So they pleaded with him when they rested at Bethany. Master, you are foot sore. Do not walk any further. Ride the rest of the way so that when we enter Jerusalem, you will feel fresh and rested. And there are the men. And guess what? What animal are they thinking about commandeering so that Jesus can have a little ride the rest of the way? Can you see that little animal there? We'll find out shortly what that animal was. And Jesus, who knew well what they were thinking, smiled and said, I think you're right. Yes, I will ride the rest of the way. If you will go down this road, you will come to a field, and there you will see the colt of an ass. No man has ever ridden it before. Bring him to me, and I will ride into Jerusalem on him. Now the colt of an ass is only a small animal, and one which had never before been ridden and was therefore not used to people, was likely to be a bit of a handful. But the disciples knew by now that even in the smallest things he did, Jesus was always wise and bright and good. If he wishes to ride into Jerusalem on a colt, then that was sufficient for them, and he should do so. So off they went down the road, and sure enough, just as Jesus had said, there in a the field they saw the young colt. And having asked permission of the owner, they brought the colt to Jesus. Meanwhile, inside Jerusalem, crowds of people had travelled to the city gates to watch the arrival of Jesus, who claimed to be king of the Jews. For even in the days of no wireless and no telephones, news could travel fast, and they had heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem and everyone was curious to see him. Such fantastic stories they had heard of him, that he could cure blindness and leprosy and other dreadful diseases at just a touch that he had even brought the dead back to life, that he had said the Lord laid down ten commandments and said that whoever followed these should live hereafter, and that he was the poorest of men and lived on what people gave to him. Now there were those who jeered and said, King indeed, if he were a king, he would be wearing fine clothing and would travel in a gold chariot drawn by thoroughbred horses whose trappings are studded with jewels just like Herod does. This man is an imposter and a traitor. But there were others, poor people and sick people, who came with hope in their hearts. They did not mind whether Jesus had any fine show or not. They wanted to be healed and blessed by him, for they too had heard the stories of all the things he had done, and they believed. So there was plenty to argue about as they waited. At last Jesus came. Riding the ass's colt, which had never before been ridden, but which was as docile and gentle as a lamb, he came through the city gates, and even those people who did not believe him, who thought he was a traitor and a bad man, bowed their heads and were silent as he passed. And then a wonderful thing happened. 
There were many children among the crowd and suddenly, without being told, those children began to pick branches from the palm trees and to wave them above their heads and fling them down in his path so that he should ride over them. In a moment, everyone was doing the same thing and there, in less than no time, a carpet was on the ground before him, a carpet of fragrant, fragrant palm leaves and everyone was shouting, Hosanna! This means hail or welcome. Hosanna to the highest, they shouted, and cried as they flung down their palm branches. So Jesus had a carpet on the ground, just as even today a carpet is laid when a king pays a visit. Only his carpet was the finest that ever could be, because everyone who threw down a palm leaf did so, because oh, they had great love for Jesus in their heart. Jesus smiled, especially at the children whom he loved so dearly. He was content. And in these present times of ours, when we decorate our churches with palm branches on the day we call Palm Sunday, we are doing exactly as those children did in those far off days, welcoming Jesus into our hearts. And that is the story called the story of Palm Sunday.